Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Local Film Talk, the show where we talk to local filmmakers about the stuff they're working on. I'm your host, as always, Bob Walters, and today we have on for the third time, I believe, uh, local writer, director, producer, uh, Christopher G. Moore. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad to be on here again, man. Thanks for asking me. <laughs> yeah, uh, we usually talk about the, the movies you're working on, but uh, this time we're changing it up a little bit because you are actually in reporter mode. Um, tell us a little bit about that. You're supposed to be going to Dragon Con in a couple weeks. Yeah, um, I, I've been going to Dragon Con for like, like the last, I think, seven or eight years, I think. Um, and uh, the last two years, actually, I, I got a media pass for the for the first time. I was doing it for Movie Viral. Cool. And um, I, I, I stopped writing for Movie Viral a while back, and um, and I've been doing stuff with Horror News Radio with the Hannibal podcast, and sometimes uh, I'm a guest on some of their other podcasts. Um, and so uh, I, I got them and HorrorNews.net to sort of allow me to apply for immediate pass. And so I'm, I'm going, I'm going there, uh, as media for them and, uh, going to be covering a lot of the horror stuff that's going to be happening. Um, specifically cause Hannibal is going to be there. Well, not mad. I hear you I, like that show. I hear you're, yeah, a I, I'm a little bit obsessed. You may have um, mentioned that once or twice. A little bit, uh, <laughs> but they actually have two actors from the show. They have Aaron Abrams and Scott Thompson. Uh, most people may know Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall, right. but uh, a they're very both dramatic part for him. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, so they they're going to be there. And I, I have uh, applied to interview with them. We'll see if I'm able to. It, you know, if not, there are three Hannibal panels happening that weekend. Two with those two actors, and then uh, there's a third one. Uh, that's just about ha the fanables, you know, about, uh, you, know, right. you know, being a Hannibal fan. Um, they, they also have a few other people there. Uh, Tom Meisen from Sleepy Hollow um, right. is going to be there. I've actually applied to possibly interview him. I don't know if I will or not. I'm actually a big fan of Sleepy Hollow, so I'm kind of excited about that uh, as well. So, um, so yeah. I'm, what a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of that goth of, uh, gothic vibe too. So uh, I, I enjoyed that show also. That uh, that did two seasons. It hasn't been renewed, has it? Yes, yes, it has. It has. Oh, it been has. Okay, so we will get a season three. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I love the show because it, you know, anytime you do that fish out of water type thing, the the way they went mm -hmm. about it was actually pretty hilarious. Right. You know, to where it it wasn't this person who was acting like you know a, a, a caveman. Oh, what is this? You know, he he he's a very intelligent person, and so if he doesn't know what it is, he tries to figure it out. Right. Um. And so I just love that. I love the the uh, the chemistry between him and and the, the female cop. Uh. So I I really love the show. I think it's and it's a very dark show to begin with. I mean, it has. Yeah. Both humor and it has both both darkness, you know, and I guess it's I guess that's why it, I see it sort of similar to Hannibal and 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 how they go about it. So yeah, so it's it's going to be kind of cool. They ha they actually have the guy who um did the special effects on that show is going to be at Dragon Con as well. Oh cool. So yeah, there's a lot of cool. They have a hard track specifically where they have a lot of different um uh, like like I think last year I think they had um a few of the horror people like the guy who played um Pinhead and. Um, oh really? Yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely a very fun. Uh, it's going to be a fun time, and uh, and I'm going to try to get maybe some of the horror cosplay. You know, try to specialize on maybe getting some video of that. So we'll see how it goes. So I, I'm really excited, and I, I'm I always love going to Dragon Con. It's like one of my favorite times of the year. <laughs> cool. So tell me a little, because I'm um you know I'm not familiar so much with journalism in general but especially when it comes to uh to journalism at uh conventions how how does that work because it's you know like you said you have to i guess that you first you have to submit uh to get a press pass and uh they have to decide i guess if you're a legitimate site and if you're going to be i do they have a are they just making sure that you're a legitimate reporter and anybody who there's no limit on how many of those to let in, or are there a limited number of press passes? There are a limited amount of people they let in, um, and they do they do look at um, they do look at certain things like your like if you're a website, they look at your your pages, you know, or not pages, uh, like how many views, um, unique views, 
uh, per day or they, they, they look at different things like that. Um, they, okay. and now that I think this year they started looking at things like if, if there's a Twitter affiliated with it, how many followers you have with that Facebook page, how many, I mean, they look at a lot of really sort of, uh, social media aspects of it. Um, but yeah, they, they do specifically try to f- make sure that you're a real, if you have to, you have to send them like a copy of your license. I mean, it's, it's mm-hmm. very, uh, they want to make sure that you're not just somebody who just like some guy like, wants says, to get oh, it for free. Yeah. I want to be a reporter. You know, <laughs> I, I post stuff on my Facebook that makes me a reporter. No, it does not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, they, there is a certain, um, thing you have to go through, but they do look at your thing, your stuff. And, uh, luckily I've, you know, like I said, I've gotten in the last two years and this would be my third year as a reporter. So I'm, I'm really, um, happy about that. Although, you know, I'm, I'm probably not your normal reporter person. So. <laughs> what is normal these days, especially when you're talking about a con? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. And I, well, the thing is that it, the interesting thing is like, if I do get interviews with some of these people, um, I'm going to post some of the video interviews online, but we're also going to post some, the audio of it on mm-hmm. some of the horror news radio stuff, especially if we do the hand that we'll post it to the Hannibal podcast. If we get interviews with some of the Hannibal people, um, right, I'm also, right. I'm, I'm also hoping to, to, um, maybe have an opportunity to talk to some of the fanables there. Oh, okay. Uh, there is a fanable group that's going to have a meetup and I went to the one last year and, uh, I was, the, I was, the weird thing I was, I was the only guy. So I, I, I that's, <laughs> To me, that was odd. There's a I I didn't realize. I mean, I, I guess I started realizing online with a lot of the fan groups. A lot of it's made up by mostly women. Huh. And you think you think such a gory show, uh, uh, women wouldn't be attracted it to that. Does not but, traditionally appeal to the to the female demographic. Um, or but, so they would yeah. say. Yeah, and there, there's a huge a female fan base. There's a huge. Uh, uh, it seems to be a lesbian fan base to it. Uh, so it's. Hmm. It's, 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 inter- it's very interesting and, uh, but it's, it's cool to be, to feel like a part of something. And they're, I think they're planning on doing a, um, they're planning on doing some kind of dinner meetup the Thursday, the Wednesday or Thursday before. Um, but I'm definitely going to go to that and maybe, maybe I'm thinking about maybe getting some interviews. I, now, now I have in my mind, I, I'd love to do a documentary on fanables. Those people <laughs> who are just as obsessed as I am about the show, especially with an ending. I think it might be a nice thing to do. Uh, it's a cool thing to do. So in the back of my head, I'm thinking I made may, maybe I might get some interviews while I'm there, but I don't know. We'll That'd see. Be cool. Yeah. Uh, a, a word of advice. You might not want to accept a dinner invitation from a Hannibal fan. Well, yeah, Just yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I agree with that. <laughs> so, well, of course, of course, when you're a drag on, you have to watch what anybody hands you uh, to drink or to eat. So, All right. You're going to end up with the crud. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's <laughs> a lot of that that goes on. Definitely. So, um, so yeah, you're talking about covering um, not only the the actual people that you get to interview, which uh, I, guess, I guess we'll hit on that real quick. Um, much like having to apply to get the press pass, it's not just once you're in, uh, you get to wander on through. I guess they give you a list of all the different uh, people that are there to be in- to be interviewed, and you have to submit which ones you're interested in, and they pick. Uh, and I guess to tag on to that, do you know how they do it? Is it like a lottery system or is it a merit system? No. I, and and I, I will say that um, when it comes to the media aspect of, of uh, Dragon Con, they do an amazing job on keeping you informed on how to do, you know, how to get your passes. You know, you know, you, you can you can set up interviews with any of the people that run Dragon Con um, or, or the media people. Um but yeah, w- in regards to that, what happens is uh, they they put a form online to where you can say, "I want to interview this person." What kind of interview it is? Is it an audio interview? Is it just you know? Would you accept doing a call if they called you uh, over the phone? That kind of stuff. So that you, you can spe- specify like what type of interview you, you want to do, and then what they do is they submit it to the agents of these people or whoever the managerial part of of them of their you know, I don't know whoever they, I guess whoever they work through to get them there or, or right. you know, cause I guess their agent says, you know, this guy isn't, you know, this is not a type of reporting we want you talking to, or, or this guy's not as big time, you know? Right. And then based on that, they approve or deny that. Okay. And so that's what it comes down to. Um, and then, and then, uh, 
Now, are there also restrictions on, because you had talked about, um, I guess, specifically since uh, you do the Hannibal fan cat, the, the, the your, your podcast is uh, Hannibal Fanibal podcast? Hannibal, Hannibal fan podcast. Hannibal fan podcast on Horror News Radio. And you had mentioned that if you do get to talk to any of the Hannibal folks, you're going to get video of that and uh, hopefully, you know, share that on the site. Uh, are there often restrictions about how you're allowed to record interviews and stuff? Like microphones are okay, but no cameras, that kind of thing? Um, well, I think that's why in the very beginning you say, hey, this is the type of interview I want to do. Okay. So with mine, I said I wanted to do a video interview, even though I'll use, but they don't give you any real limitations on that. In fact, they, uh, what happens also is once they, um, once the, an, an interview gets approved, they, if it's like a video interview, then they actually have a room set up oh, okay. to where you can, they'll schedule the room for a specific time so that you can use it. Okay. And, uh, and they have like chairs set up and a backdrop and, and so, uh, uh, and they then got some, it all figured out. Oh, they, oh, they do, they do. And uh, you know, I, I've, I've done, I've done. Um, I think uh, I've done a, I've done one specific one-on-one -on -one interview, and that was with Lene, Lene Quigley, who, um, who was a uh, scream queen from the '80s, who I had a huge crush okay. on, and I got to do an interview with her. Um, and then uh, I've got to do what they call, um, uh, I forgot they call it, like. Uh, a uh, multi-press type interview where th they there's several uh, interviewers there's so yeah where we all go into a room and there's all these chairs set up and then the person like because we uh, like carrie elways was there one year and and we we did that as a huge press interview and i was like on the front row and so i got to ask questions it's um, like a reverse panel discussion there's one subject and five reporters <laughs> yeah 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 and so uh you sometimes you have a hard time uh, being able to get a question in michael rooker was there one year for walking dead and so i got to go to the the big uh, had press guardians room. of the galaxy come out at the time it was this is before so he wasn't oh, okay. Okay. he wasn't uh he wasn't really able to answer as many questions in regards to that Still, he was big in Walking Dead. I'm sure that was a, a pretty big, uh, big one. Oh well, I mean, for me, I'd, I'm a huge fan of Slither and uh, yeah. uh, Henry Portrait of the Serial Killer. I mean, he's he's mm. done a lot of really nice, cool ro roles uh, over the years, and uh, and he got stink palmed in Mallrats. Yeah, well, that's true. That, that's true too. He was in that too. <laughs> uh, I think somebody even brought up the 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 chocolate uh, pretzel thing. Um, Somebody offered him chocolate pretzels at the press. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's probably one of the, the more fun interviews because he just he'll tell you straight <laughs> what he thinks. Right, right. There. He seems like a really straightforward guy. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, those have been kind of interesting. So I think that's going to be the interesting thing to see. Like, I'm, I'm hoping because I did mention specifically that I'm with the Hannibal Fan Podcast. I'm hoping that they'll they'll think, hey, this guy's good for this gives you a little leg up yeah. interview. Yeah. Um, I mean, especially with Scott Thompson, considering I was such a huge fan of kids in the hall back in the day, that's going to be kind of cool if I get an interview, interview with him. Um, yeah. but yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a very interesting process and, um, and that they actually, um, if you're a first time, um, if you're a first time, uh, uh, press person, they actually have one specific night on, uh, like Wednesday, I think. Um, where they'll take you on a tour of everything and, and, and they have like almost like a kind of like an orientation type thing. So kind of orientation, but then it's they almost do it almost like a bar crawl type thing where you could <laughs> have beers while you're doing well, it. That's uh, my kind of orientation. I can get behind that. I like that yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I've actually no I've haven't done that yet. And I I think I'm gonna do it this year. Uh I, I just this really, is my first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I should act like it's that. Um because I would like to get to know them a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the people over the whole media part, they, they do such a great job of that, getting every, everybody um, scheduling everything. And um, uh, so, yeah, it's 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 going to be a it's going to be a really fun time. I'm really uh, looking forward to it like I do every year. You know, and just to see those weird things that happen, you know, um, uh, I, I think I remember uh, there, there's a, you always come away with some interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> about at what least, happened at least a story if or something else but uh yeah stories yeah. are always good yeah i think uh my uh one of my friend uh my friend rick burnett uh, he had some story about like he was waiting you relating for the elevator is like one of the big thing problems you run into especially if you're one of the main hotels uh, but, uh, yes. it gets 
And uh, supposedly there was an elevator and opened up and it was, I think it was a stormtrooper or a Jedi was making out with somebody in the elevator. And he turned around and, and waved his hand and said, this is not the elevator you want to get into. <laughs> 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 I, so, uh, oh, I, think, I think the story went something like that so the, 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 those type of things uh you know when you're oh seeing like you know uh people making out you know and di as different characters and you, oh, you see I can only imagine. drunk off their ass or or just yeah it's all it's a very uh yeah it's just it's it's a very fun time yeah follow pay attention to twitter that weekend folks it should be pretty crazy Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty bad about putting stuff out social media wise because I start always. I'm always taking pictures constantly of different costumes right. and stuff. Now you've uh, you've only been in the the journalism game um, for a couple years, I guess, or you did it for a couple years, but it wasn't that long ago. Probably what four or five years ago. Um, but the uh, I, I'm curious has even in that short period of time because technology progresses so quickly you know twitter uh you know isn't wasn't nearly you know four or five years ago wasn't nearly what it is today uh what changes have you noticed in uh film journalism you know the landscape of the websites and all that stuff and what have you noticed as far as um, like covering a convention and stuff. I imagine there was a time when if you were a reporter at Dragon Con, you were mostly just focused on those interviews you got permission to, but you're also talking about, um, you know, uh, getting photos of people in the hallways, talking to people at the, uh, the fan base. I know your friends over at uh, Beatdown Boogie um, do a lot of covering the, the cosplay stuff on the floor. So it seems like there's more pressure to also get uh, a lot of other stuff, um, you know, what's what the atmosphere is, other, you know, not necessarily scheduled events, but just also th things that are happening around there. So how, how have things changed a little bit in the time you've been covering uh, cons? Um, I don't know. It, it, I think uh, I think probably one of the biggest things that sort of changed is the whole um, the social media landscape. Mm -hmm. um, because there's so many different forms of social media that people can record uh, what's happening from, you know, Instagram to Twitter. Right. Uh, one of the new things that people, I, I know that actually some uh, other reporters that I follow that went to, have gone to several conventions, um, like the recent the D D23, the Disney one. Right, right. Um, there's a few of them that actually have started using Periscope. And, right periscope and, uh, was not a thing the last time dragon con happened yeah and and of course it's also become a a bane for those people that try to keep stuff secretive because i know i was one of those people when they were trying to show like trailers and stuff i was searching for periscopes <laughs> somebody was going to get it on periscope no doubt. yeah uh but like you know like uh one of the guys from slash film you know he he would periscope when he was walking, like when he was walking over to the lineup for the Star Wars panel, mm -hmm. uh, and he would answer questions in regards to that. And sometimes he'll go on and answer questions. So I think I think that's probably one of the interesting things that changed. And I think also, you know, like back when I um, wrote for Movie Viral, when it when it got started, it was a it was a popular site because it was all about you know the the viral marketing of movies, right. And uh, movie marketing has sort of changed a little bit in regards to that to where now everybody sort of covers the viral things. And, and, and then a lot of um, a lot of uh, companies aren't, you know, aren't really into the viral marketing aspect of it as much. Um, well, it's, not, it's, not it's very hard to manufacture, you know, it's, it's hard to say, all right, if we check off A, B and C, this is going to go viral. It's it's a lot more hit and miss, you know, if you're going to be able to get your thing to go viral. And even if you do, what aspect of it is going to go viral? I mean, um, you know, perfect example, two weeks ago, straight out of Compton comes out. And I doubt anybody in the marketing uh, firm who, who was trying to promote that movie would have imagined what the uh, straight out of meme would turn into. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah, yeah, you never. And I think um, I think the main thing is like, you know, there, you know, and there's been a few movies that have done certain types that like, you know, Tomorrowland, they created this app and 
uh, involved with the movie and they, and they had this mystery box that they revealed several years ago. They had all these specific items that tied into the movie. Mm-hmm. And then you have things like, you know, like uh, before like the, the Superman movie came out, the recent Superman movie, uh, you know, they had these, little videos that would pop up and you had to like pay attention to specific things in the background, even some of the star Trek stuff, you know, there was like certain things. It was like a, 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 like a web link you could find in the very back of it, but it takes a lot of effort and there's certain companies that do that type of stuff. But then you start to wonder, it's like, you know, is this really driving more people to go see it? You know, is it just for those sort of geeky people that like are trying to solve a mystery? Right. Um, so, well, yeah. And, and the first movie you gave an example, you know, Tomorrowland, you know, all that stuff obviously didn't do, didn't prove to be a whole lot of help. So, and, and those, I'm sure the people who are out there promoting it and coming up with these uh, viral campaigns, I'm sure they're smart cookies. It's just really hard to tell what people are going to latch on to, you know, and this is something that we as, as independent filmmakers uh, can take a lesson from is that it's, you know, something going viral is very hard, if not damn near impossible to impossible to predict. And really all you can do is kind of play catch up once something happened and try to figure out what made it catch fire. Yeah. I mean, and then you have, sometimes they do marketing that really doesn't have much to do with the film. I remember there was uh, I think it was called uh called the devil inside or something where they had basically this devil baby in a care baby carriage that they could animatronically make it like scare people. Holy and, shit. and they made this, these videos where they went out on, on the street and scared the shit out of people. And, uh, <laughs> with that, and I I, that. Oh, yeah, the, the video was, it went viral, but it really doesn't have anything really to do with the movie. And I, and it really didn't. And then when they ended up, you know, the movie came out, it really didn't, it wasn't that big of a hit. So right. it's like, you wonder, it's like, even though there's this, this viral nature of, of this thing that's affiliated with it, it does, if mm-hmm. it doesn't really have anything to do with it, is it really good marketing? Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of aspects of that's, that's changed, but I, I, I definitely see that. Um, I think the problem right now is uh, back in the day, you know, you, I mean, they still have people that get certain scoops, but now people are starting to like come down on like, especially a lot of the Star Wars scoops where people are just finding stuff that just spoils the hell out of, a, you know, what the story might be about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have, because Twitter is so immediate, you know, bef- before they'd probably send it to a site and the site would post, hey, we got this right. information. Now they can post it to their own Twitter because they want to be known as the person that, that broke the story, you know. Mm-hmm. So there, I think social media has definitely changed the landscape on that. But it's also allowed, you know, different ways of, uh, you know, getting information out or actually more, more inter- interactivity with your audience. Because I know mm-hmm. like Slash Film, it's like after a panel, they'll actually record a video of themselves talking and they'll post it online. Right. So yeah, it's, there's a lot of really cool things. And I know for me, I'm big into social media and I'm always trying to figure out ways that I can sort of uh, get my own name out there. And so right. uh, I, I'm always trying to, and I think with uh, with this, I think there's, you know, some, you know, wh- whether it be taking pictures of costumes or doing video of certain things. Um, I, I definitely love doing that and, you know, showing the love. I, I know that um, you mentioned Beat Down Boogie earlier. Um, mm-hmm which I'm affiliated with because of uh, being a co-writer on Mario Warfare. Right. Um, if you really want to get a sense of what Dragon Con is all about, go watch their videos, go watch their, any of their Dragon Con cosplay videos. Yes. It shows you the fun, the four day Halloween party that that convention is all about. Mm-hmm. And, um, we'll and put I think a link in the show notes, but, uh, yeah, yeah, beat down boogie. They do a lot of, uh, really great con coverage. Yeah. And I, th- the thing is they, you know, I think before, uh, when people would do like a, sh- a video of cosplay, it would just be like, it would just be like very like bland, just, you know, Oh, I'm just doing a, a quick video, almost like you're, you're on vacation or something, you know? Right. But, uh, I know that Micah, you know, and I think a lot, a lot of the people that do videos now are starting to sort of create this same style. But I think Micah, when he started doing it, it, it sort of had a really, he shot it in a, not a beautiful way to where mm-hmm. it really brought to the forefront, the cosplay, all the intricacy of how they create their costumes and, and just how they play those characters, you know? Right. Um, and, uh, and then he adds this music to it that just makes you like, it, for me, it's like, oh, I like, you know, after Dragon Con, I watched the video and it's like, oh, I wish it was still going on and <laughs> I look forward to the next year. So, I think he, I think he does a great job of like 
taking that, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, as a form of media himself, mm -hmm. you know, going to this convention and showing the best parts of it. Okay. And, you know, and that's another thing, you know, another example of something that has become, you know, when it first started out, people didn't know what it was. They're trying to figure out what to do. And a lot of your cosplay coverage is probably a lot of photos of people standing there and everything. But now it's evolved into something where, like you say, you're telling the story of the atmosphere and what people are doing. And you probably have a, a personality driven video with somebody who's going up and talking to the people and you're showing all the the humor and that kind of stuff. And you, you know, you really, you can't just put a slideshow of people in crazy costumes up anymore. You actually have to tell a story. Well, that, that, and they, I mean, a lot of the, um, the videographers of these conventions are, are starting to use a lot of these new tools that haven't been used for conventions. Mm -hmm. You know, like you see a lot of, a lot of the, the guys are using stabilizers and, you know, they shoot stuff in slow motion. And right. uh, I mean, uh, just, and you, know, you can do all that on a phone now, you know, there's, um, you know, I bet you four or five years. Well, you said you've been going there for uh, uh, six or seven years going to Dragon Con. I'm sure when you first went there, you know, the people who were photographers or reporters or whatever, when they were taking pictures with a camera, it was, you know, an actual camera. And now mm -hmm. I bet you most people are walking around with a cell phone. I did um, last week. I did an episode of Das Beer Show. I mean, I shot it about a month and a half ago, but it came out last week. It was an episode where. I went up to the Boone Blowing Rock area in the North Carolina mountains and did uh, tours of the breweries up there and, uh, you know, interviewed some of the brewers, all that stuff and everything. And I took with me my DSLR camera. You know, it's not high end, uh, the Canon T5, T5i, you know, but still, a, you know, a nice DSLR camera, three chip, uh, 1920 by 1080, all that stuff and everything. And I left it in the car. I shot the whole thing on my iPhone 6. You know, and I bet you a lot of times nowadays you're seeing people, you know, I'm sure I'm sure uh, Micah and those guys are probably using, you know, more professional level equipment. But I, you know, a lot of the stuff that you're seeing out there and even stuff that's popular uh, is probably being shot on a lot cheaper, more accessible equipment. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I will have to say that Micah and then they use some really uh, high end lenses and they, to get some of the shots, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like they, they, they had one guy who actually had a, um, a drone, uh, cause they had some cosplay that happened outside. And so they actually used a drone shot. I was going to say, you got to watch out for those chandeliers when you use a drone in the hallway. <laughs> well, 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 luckily it was outside. So, uh, right. they got, they got a really nice shot because uh, they, um, there's this one part of, uh, Dragon Con where these, there's these stairs and, um, they uh, sometimes they'll have a lot of the the DC or the Marvel cosplay, and you'll have the whole, these huge group of different ones. And like one year, James Gunn uh, came out, uh, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Yeah. And uh, also very good at using social media. He's he's uh, oh, very good at it. Oh yeah, I, I actually uh, every time he periscopes, I watch it because he's <laughs> and it's it's funny. And I, you, you talked about how the changing landscape of like uh, journalism, but he'll do these periscopes and then the next thing variety will post an article about, you know, stuff he talked about is a periscope. Right. Right. So it's, it's interesting how like even, you know, they're starting to glean these pieces of information from things like, you know, online videos or, or Instagram pictures. And that's become like the new norm of where they get their information from celebrities or, right. or, or filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, half the articles out there are, are just, you know, uh, you know, it's not even uh, sharing information they got from an interview. They're just sharing what they read on Twitter. Well, yeah, I mean, look at, the, you know, I mean, look at the uh, I think that even uh, today that um, Donnie Yen, who's in the new Rogue One. A Rogue, uh, the Rogue Squadron um, mm -hmm. movie that's coming out in Star Wars. Um, he posted a picture of uh, three different helmets that the people are wearing. You know, so they, mm -hmm. I mean, a while back you had uh, uh, Jared Leto when he was posting pictures, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, and the new Ghostbusters movie. Um, Ghostbusters what's his name? Movie, yeah. The uh, the director of that. Uh, like, Paul Feig. Almost, all, Paul Feig, yeah. All, all, the, uh, all the visual stuff you've got from that, you know, the costumes, the the car, all that stuff, the, the um, looks, uh, hairstyle and everything of all the characters, all that has come out through his Twitter account. Well, yeah, and and he even uh, he even released. Uh, I think after he showed like what the the new proton packs, or at least the early version of the proton packs, look like. Mm -hmm. After that, he posted a thing which which actually gave dimensions on everything, so that oh, if people shit. were cosplaying as those characters, 
they could start creating those costumes. So that's one thing I'm really looking forward to. I'm, I'm hoping maybe we'll might see some, you know, some female Ghostbusters. Oh, uh, nice. I mean, I mean, not, I mean, there's actually usually are some female Ghostbusters, that, right, right, but not not your regular ones. Now you're specifically cosplaying as Kristen Wiig. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, which now, 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 I think it should be funny where they should have a group of guys dressed up as, you know, as and gender, gender swapped. <laughs> That'd be funny. Ghostbusters. A guy who's cosplaying as Kristen Wiig, who's kind of cosplaying as Harold Ramis. Yes. Wow. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that, they should do that man chef. That would be interesting. <laughs> Crazy. So, yeah, I and mean, it sounds like an interesting scene, uh, especially the, the journalism aspect. What would you say to someone who was interested in getting into uh, fil film journalism, you know, going to conventions or... I don't want to say talking to celebrities. Obviously, that's not you know you don't just up and get a an interview with somebody. But if, if somebody wanted to to get into what you're doing right now, as far as the reporting, uh, what advice would you give them? What's a great way to start? I mean, sometimes it could be just as simple as you know creating your own website, you know, uh, or, or blog or something, and and doing stuff from that. I mean, and you could start off small. I mean, there's a lot of conventions, the smaller conventions that you know accept you know varying types of uh, uh, journalists mm -hmm. so you could you could or just cover it on your own and, and you and you have uh, and you start building up uh, a repertoire of like you know all kinds of things that you've done i know that mm -hmm. when i first applied for movie viral um i started uh, my own site called film geekery and i was writing articles for it and um uh, it was based on my articles for that 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 i applied um as a, a journalist on that site so and you were um, getting your when you for the film geekery stuff you were i mean you obviously didn't have a travel budget or press credentials to go out and do stuff you were mostly just reading other articles and then putting your twist and your analysis on it yeah yeah if it was like specific news that came out i would put my own twist on it or or if i did like a review of a movie or uh or you know that kind of stuff so um, or like I'd cover a panel and I'd write something up about that panel. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think that's the main thing is like yeah, putting your stuff out there. And I think once you build a, a certain uh, amount of uh, articles or things you've worked on, and then if you if you, there's a specific site, you know, that you'd like to write for, you can look and see if they're hiring and mm -hmm. and there's always a possibility of it. But the main thing is just go get out there and do it. It's like, it's like filmmaking, you know, it's like don't don't wait for it to happen. Do it. You and don't then, need permission. You just need to, you know, the the know how and the, um, you know, the gumption to go out and do it yourself. Yeah, because uh, a lot of times you don't realize the amount of effort it takes to do that kind of stuff to where you might realize, uh, maybe maybe journalism's not what I want to do. And I know for me, it's like I like doing it a little bit, but I couldn't, I can never do it full time. <laughs> uh, I'd rather be a filmmaker. I'd rather hire people to do that kind of stuff for me. But um, right. But uh, but I am a I'm a very geeky person when it comes to movies and. Uh, you know, especially the horror genre lately. And so uh, it, it's kind of cool to sort of talk to these people and, and, and feel like that, you know, I'm on the level of, you know, extra or <laughs> nice. <laughs> Some of these nice. TV shows that you see that are all based around doing interviews with celebrities or, or even just writing up stuff about that, you know? And Hey, maybe you get to meet one of your heroes every now and then. That's true. That's true. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I got to meet, uh, I got to interview Lene Quigley many years ago, who uh, I had a huge crush on as a kid, um, who was like a scream queen back in the 80s. And uh, so I got to interview her. I mean, I got to be part of an interview with Carrie Elways, mm -hmm. um, Michael Rooker. So it, it, I have got to sort of talk to some really interesting people, even not, not even an interview um aspect you know i've gotten to talk to several celebrities when i've gone to conventions and got to ask some questions and stuff and and to me it's just it's just geeky to hear them talk about certain <laughs> things or just go to a panel and just sit there and listen to them tell, tell stories about how this film was made or how this actor is or that kind of stuff i i, mm -hmm. I think um actually one of my more favorite things is um uh what's his name um uh, what's the guy that was uh the guy was in 16 candles uh the geeky kid um Oh, the guy from um, Weird Two and a Half Science. Men? Weird Science. Oh, Anthony uh, Michael Hall? Anthony Michael Hall. Right. He was at Dragon Con one year. And uh, he did, uh, I went to his panel and he told some really cool stories. Uh, uh, talking about like when he used to uh, go to uh, uh, the guy, uh, 
man, my mind's not working. The the guy who wrote uh, Weird Science, John Hughes. John Hughes, yeah. He'd he go to over John Hughes' ca- house and they'd watch Eddie Murphy's Raw or <laughs> you know, the stand-up <laughs> routine uh, or just stuff like that, you know. And then I got to meet him in person because he talked about he started a production company. Hmm. And uh, I got a picture taken with him and he signed a, a, a weird science poster. And uh, I told him I was a filmmaker and stuff. And he actually gave me his card, his production company card. Hmm. And, uh, and he wrote like a really nice thing on my poster, you know, talking about, you know, filmmaking and stuff so i don't know it's just kind of kind of kind of a cool thing to meet these people that you you know normally just see on your tv set uh, or on your phones nowadays uh mm-hmm. and just to meet them in person and, and find out who they are in, in reality and and for me it's like you know man one of these days i'd love to be able to work with these people <laughs> as a filmmaker do that, some industry research and geek out at the same time i yeah well that, that and then lately i've been thinking about that too because uh, you know i I have a feature film I want to do in, in soon in the next year. And, uh, I I'd like to get like a, 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 you know, not a big celebrity, but I'd like to somebody who's has some kind of genre cred mm-hmm. behind them. And so, uh, I go to these conventions like, Oh, this person might be good for that role. And this other person might be good. So I am doing my homework with that as well. Well, right. when, uh, if, if anybody who's, uh, doing a panel at, uh, at Dragon Con or any other convention, if you see Christopher G. Moore, he might just be reporting or he might be scouting. Yeah. And you know, the, <laughs> the one thing though, I'm really, I'm really sad about is, um, I, uh, I, I had, uh, contacted the horror track guy cause I really wanted to be on the fanable panel mm-hmm. and they had too many people on it. So I wasn't able to get on it. So I'm really sad cause I'm feeling because of Hannibal ending soon that they won't have another Hannibal panel <laughs> and, and I'd love to be a part of that. So, oh, well, yeah. this is one of those things. At least I'll be there to see it. I know I went to the panel. They had a Hannibal panel last year and just to see this whole group of geeky people, they had woman, woman had a tattoo on her back that was Hannibal related and just, I, I maybe realize I'm just, I'm not the only obsessive person here that loves this, uh, this show. Mm-hmm. So that's and you cool may thing. not even be the worst person in the room. You know, it's like, I thought I was crazy, but that guy, Ooh, well, and I think watch out I, for him. Well, if you have any kind of uh, uh, geeky thing that you love, you know, w- whether it be movies or, or you know, board game playing or any of that kind of stuff, you go to Dragon Con. There's going to be a group for you. You're going to feel you're going to feel like you're going to feel like part of a group. You're not going to be an individual when you're at Dragon Con. So you're going to find people that are just like you, and that's the cool part of it. It's just one. It's like the geek mecca for me. <laughs> Well, one of these times days I'll have to swing by. I know there's a couple a uh, couple people, um, you know, podcasts that I listen to that show up every year. Um, and I actually have a couple friends that go uh too. Uh Yale Giffen, uh we mm-hmm. both know. I think he's uh there. He goes just about every year. So yeah, it sounds like a party. I'm gonna have to hit it up sometime. So you, you definitely should. I'm trying to get the hard news radio people out there because <laughs> I think they'd really enjoy it as well. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for chatting with us about uh, uh, journalism and covering conventions. Uh, that's really cool stuff. The, the you know the kind of thing that I, you know, half the time I don't think of, but it's its own little genre. So uh, mm-hmm. thanks for sharing a little insight into that. That's definitely something people who are interested in filmmaking or you know just geeky stuff in general. Uh, cool information for them. So before we head out, uh, go ahead and tell us. A uh, little bit about what you're working on. I had actually asked people for some uh, some questions. I wanted some uh, some questions from the audience. Something new I'm trying to do. Uh, get the audience engaged. And I asked if anybody had any questions for Christopher G. Moore tonight. And we got one from Bill Mulligan. That should be a good transition into what you're working on. He wants me to ask you how many knobs could a knob goblin gnaw if a goblin could gnaw knobs? I think I got it. I, I, I think I got my, made my way through that without messing up. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, well, I, I think that's, uh, that question. It's, it's pretty easy to answer because knob goblins do gnaw knobs. <laughs> <laughs> That is you're their main reason. It. It's been hard when you're staring at the text and you're trying <laughs> to pull it out of your head. I, I feel for you, man. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it, you know, considering it's about a demonic creature that bites your penis off, yeah, I think he could eat as many knobs as he wants. Uh, Correct answer is it's messy. It's really messy. Very messy. Very messy. Uh, 
but yeah, and, and uh, you know, and and so tell us know. about the knob goblins. Oh yeah, knob goblins. It's my newest uh, horror short. Um, right now, right now, it's just a waiting game. I'm waiting to hear back from several film festivals um, in the next months, a few months, and so uh, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Um, now you've uh, got a more or less finished cut. You're just putting a little, a uh, few finishing touches on it, but it should, uh, it should be making the rounds in the next few months, hopefully. Right. Hopefully. I know that there's one big film festival I'm waiting on right now, which is, you know, we'll, we'll see if, if I hear back anything, but, uh, but there's a few later on, especially when we get into October. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a few that I, hopefully I'll get into maybe in Orlando, Oh, nice. uh, that I want to go because they have the Halloween Horror Nights at the Universal Studios, and so I got I went there last year for the Orlando Film Festival, and and I had a blast the whole time I was there. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to go back. And there's a couple of other horror film festivals that happen in Orlando as well. So, but yeah, right now it's just a waiting game on that. I mean, it's pretty much finished. There's just a few things I want to tweak here and there with audio wise. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm happy with it enough to where I can put it as a screener for people to watch. Um. So yeah, it's it's. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, Bill Mulligan, who left that question, he's the one that created the monster for it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, actually, to go along with that, um, in the next probably the next few days, I'm I'm still working on it. But we we will be uh, doing a crowdsourcing campaign uh, to considering that all the money used to make it has been on my dime <laughs> uh and all the money that's been spent to send it to the film festivals have been sent to so far have been from me um uh i want to do a crowdsourcing campaign um so that i can make back that money so that i could send it to more festivals so i can just invest it into more yeah. stuff and uh to make people want to uh to give money uh towards that we're going to have lots of really cool interesting things uh, around the knob goblin uh, you know, we're going to have, you know, uh, stickers with what I call knobby, the knob goblin. Um, oh, he's got a name now. That's, that's what I, well, creepy. Well, I have, I have this uh, one guy who did an artistic rendering of it. That's, you know, I call it knobby. So, um, <laughs> and then we'll also have, uh, we're going to have uh, knob goblin condoms that people can buy. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a knob goblins eighties lunchbox. Ooh. We're going to have a limited amount of those for sale. Um, we're going to have uh, a knob goblin uh, bobblehead where the knob goblin is the bobble part of it <laughs> oh. <laughs> on the crotch. Uh, um, we're going to have a, a, a crocheted version of the knob goblin, which oh, is going to be shit. really awesome. We're going to have uh, uh, knob goblin uh, magnets from my good friend uh, Anthony Lupino. Um, I think that's his name uh, from. Uh, candy corn apocalypse okay um and uh yeah so i've got all kinds of really interesting artistic people that are helping with it and uh so yeah we're gonna have all kinds of cool stuff that people get and i, I i'm debating about it i may actually have one of the the knob goblin props that people can pay for mm, okay. it's gonna be a little bit more expensive if you want an actual prop um right. and also if, if you want to be an executive producer you can Give me a big chunk of change and I'll put your name <laughs> big in the credits. Uh, so yeah, there'd be a lot of ways for people to, uh, to pledge money um, to help us out so that we can get into more film festivals. Cause that's the main thing we want it to be seen. And, and I really, I'm really proud of what we achieve with the, the, the cast and crew that I use. And I appreciate you coming out and filming some behind the scenes stuff uh, one day. Yeah. Um, one, one day it will, uh, it will come out. Uh, and of course, in the meantime, if you guys need any, uh, you know, promotional behind the scenes photos or anything. I got a hard drive full of it. So all you well, got to do is ask. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be hitting you up on that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the marketing potential of it. And, uh, I'm definitely going to be, um, uh, I think Bill Mulligan talked about, he, he got these, these, uh, animatronic Santa Claus things and we're going to put it inside one of the knob goblins so that when I take it to conventions, it'll move on its own. So oh, that's messed up. <laughs> yeah. That's really messed up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we we've got a lot of uh, a lot of cool things, and so uh, I hope that if people are interested in helping us to get it out to film festivals, hopefully you want to, you know, even though it is for a movie called Knob Goblins, <laughs> uh, hopefully you want to donate and get some cool stuff in the process and be, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, so people be looking for that. You can you can check out the Knob Goblins film on Facebook and follow mm -hmm. us on there, and you'll know exactly when that'll be. 
hitting the airwaves along with my my Twitter. I like films. Um, and uh, also yeah, what another, else you got going on? Um, I have a. Uh, Oh, actually, uh, I have a. I actually am part of a upcoming anthology film called Sixty Seconds to Die, and okay. uh, where each each filmmaker does a sixty second, like horror short. You know, where I guess where someone dies or, or something horrific happens. Nice. Um. So I'm really excited about that. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um. So that's uh, hopefully we, uh, at some point, uh, and, and you know, and that'll be part. Of, I'll be part of a feature, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, really. Let's see, um, I know that right now I'm in the still in the process of of uh, writing a, a screenplay with my good friend Jeffrey Moore. Uh, that's a haunted house film, and so we're trying to get that moving along. <laughs> uh, also, one one piece of news that I'd like to announce that I just found out right before we started broadcasting is um my uh, last film, Disengage, which is still on the film festival circuit. Believe it or not, still it's out actually, there. It's, it's going to be nice. playing. It's it's going to be playing in San Antonio, Texas, this weekend. So if you're those people who may listen to this, even though it's a triangle area thing, uh, uh, if you live people near travel, San, people could be, yeah, you yeah. know, if, on you're, business. If, you're, if you're traveling to Texas for business, go to San Antonio and uh, go to the Her San Antonio Horrific Film Festival. And I just found out right before the broadcast that we are nominated for Best Short. We're nominated for Best Actress for Alina Koch, which I'm really happy about. This is her, her second nomination as actress for that film, uh, which she was previously nominated for um, the the um, the, the uh, film festival that happened at XCon uh, in Myrtle Beach. Um, and we're also nominated for Best Special Effects. Awesome. So uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I, and uh, for me, it's just uh, any, any of the people that are part of the film, you know, whether it be uh, Mariah uh who uh who did the the makeup um mariah johnson and uh angela pritchett who helped do the makeup for disengaged you know or it's alina who did an amazing job uh as the main character in that and anytime that they get props for what they do in the film i'm really happy about because that that makes me happier than me being nominated for anything so but yeah it's it's it, i really happy um the guys over at san antonio horrific film fest are you know, they, they do a great job with um, making the filmmakers film, uh, you know, feel like a part of something. And I, I'm, you know, I'm like really, I'm torn about, it. I'd really like to figure out a way to go. I'm always tempted to drive down there. Uh, that's a hole. That's a, uh, it's a couple of uh, it in the car. Well, I, I thought about driving to my parents' house in Alabama and one day and then driving there. But uh, I know with Dragon Con coming up and, other film festivals, uh, money wise, I'm kind of tapped out. So, right, you got to uh, pick and choose your battles. But it's still cool that you got all those uh, nominations, and you know the your your cast and crew is in on that. You know, filmmaking is a is a team effort, and it's good to see everybody get their get their uh, acknowledgement. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so there's a lot of great things happening right now, and so right now, like I said, um, I'm waiting to hear back from some film festivals with with uh, Knob Goblins, and then uh, hopefully start my feature stuff, you know, uh, yeah. you know, start it later in the year. Well, awesome. It's good to see you got a full plate going on. Good luck with the, uh, the nominations at the, uh, the festival in San Antonio. And we mm -hmm. are looking forward to your, um, to your dragon con coverage. And, uh, you know, if anybody is interested in following Christopher, um, you know, obviously there's the Hannibal fan podcast, mm -hmm. uh, you know, doesn't doesn't look like you've got a show to uh, to keep talking about. So yeah, uh, I don't well, know how long you can keep that going. But well, um, uh, hopefully we uh, there'll be some other podcasts that I can be a part of. I know there's some oh, other sure, shows sure, sure, yeah, out. yeah. Um, oh, also I wanted to mention that we also have another uh, Disengage is actually playing in September at Austin Revolution Film Festival in okay. Austin. So, uh, but yeah, you can you can follow uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I like films. You can you can follow my um, filmmaker page on Facebook, uh, filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. Uh, you can follow Knob Goblins, Knob Goblins Film, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, follow us there, and uh, and uh, you know, ho and also you know, don't help pledge uh, when, once we get the crowdsourcing campaign up and running because you you're helping us sort of to get it seen. Mm -hmm. Help bring help bring knob goblins to a screen near you. I can't remember if I said that before, but it bears repeating if I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let, let, let's uh, yeah bring bring the the knob 
gobbler <laughs> to your town. No, no, don't put it. Don't put it that way. <laughs> now, now you're not going to get any money. You're not helping yourself, man. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, Christopher G. Moore, uh, congratulations on everything you've done so far. We're looking forward to the uh, to the new stuff you got on the horizon. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us. It's been a, a real pleasure, and I hope to have you on again soon. Uh, hopefully, to talk about some uh, some knob goblins. Oh, that would be great. I, I always love talking to you, man. Anytime you want me to come on the show, I'm always available. Well, thank you. And thank you to everybody out there watching. Uh, this has been Local Film Talk, of course. You can follow us uh, at Local Film Talk on Twitter. Um, we post a lot of stuff on the Triangle Life TV Facebook page. And, of course, you can go to our page on Triangle Life TV to see new episodes. And, uh, of course, there's the the local film talk RSS feed. If you want to subscribe to the podcast and have that pop up on your phone, uh, whenever. And, uh, this is streaming right now, of course, on YouTube. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do, uh, more live shows in the future, but you can always see new stuff and older stuff on our YouTube channel. So don't forget to check that stuff out. So thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for Christopher for joining us. And, uh, we look forward to seeing you all next week. <laughs>